In this video, I'm going to show you my five favorite Tom Sweep licks. And if you just want the goods, see the chapter marks below, or download the free transcription at the link below the player. But if you feel like a guided tour of the Tom Sweep, with some of your favorite players and detailed breakdowns on how to play this stuff, you may want to watch the whole video. And stick around to the end, because I'm actually really going to show you a trick I just discovered to make my Tom Sweeps sick. No, I know it's usually a gimmick, but not today. Today I actually really Stick around till number five. With that out of the way, why do we care? I mean, this is John Bonham. This is Steve Gadd. This is Vinny. Do I have your attention now? Today on 8020, my five favorite Tom Sweep licks. Who invented them, how to use them, and some creative ways to use them within a song. Cause it's all about playing for the song, am I right guys? Anyway, stay tuned. Tom sweeps are a cool element to add to a drum solo, which otherwise might primarily be on the snare, or else bouncing off the snare. Instead of just hitting toms in lieu of accents on the snare, a sweep is a handy way of connecting them in a way that sounds really badass. Of course, one of the most famous purveyors of this style was one Mr. Bonham. But let's back up, because Bonham's tom sweeps didn't come from nowhere. Bonham was a big fan of jazz, and one of the early creators of sweeps was Max Roach. Let's listen to an example. So that's where we'll start. Tom Sweep lick number one. Max Roach. Here's the basic lick. This is something you can probably play at home today, even if you're just a beginner. And here's the sweep that's at the root of it. Just snare, high tom, low tom, kick. By changing the phrase length, Max makes a clever shape. Again, it's super simple, but it's also hip. And when you put this with rock drumming, it sounds like Mitch Mitchell. cover a couple of applications. Here I'll start with two bars of swung rock groove, then I'll play Max's phrase as the fill. But instead of starting on beat one, I'll start on beat two. Let's try another version, which reminds me of something Steve Jordan might do. Here I'm starting on beat one, but I'm just playing with the phrase a little. If you'd like a free transcription of all of these, just click the link below the player. So Max's vocabulary influences Bonham, then Bonham starts playing stuff like this. Which brings us to Tom Sweep Lick number two. Bonham's fill from Stairway to Heaven. Here's the lick slowly. Of course, if you're already sweeping down the toms, you can do as many strokes as you want on the floor tom. Bonham's taken a three beat phrase that sounds like this on the snare, and just orchestrated it around the toms. When it comes to applications, because this is already one of the most famous rock fills of all time, you can first of all just copy it verbatim. But we at 8020, we wanna do one better. Let's show you two variations you might make from this source material. The first is starting the lick on the and of one instead of the down. I'll slow that down. And the second is reversing the direction. Reverse the polarity.
And we'll play this one slowly too. Those are just a few of the ways you can mess with Bonham's lick and make it your own. From Bonham, we go to another drummer who made a huge mark in the 70s, and maybe the most famous thing he ever played, at least with drum nerds, is this. Which of course brings us to Tom Sweep Lick number three. Steve Gadd. And rather than grabbing verbatim from the Asia solo, I'm going to show you an offshoot that Steve discussed in a clinic way back. Here I'm playing a six stroke roll on the snare and connecting it to a tom sweep. I'll slow it down. Reminder, free transcription of all this stuff at the link below the player. The fun part is you can interchange the two licks. Here I'll play this six stroke roll for twice as long and three repetitions of the tom sweep to fill the same amount of time. Now I'll make a six beat phrase. Now I'll make a five beat phrase. The possibilities are really endless. And this interchanging exercise is an example of something I call the switching exercise, which we get into way deeper in my live coaching program. Now I'll play a beat for a couple bars and play the Gad esque fill for a couple more. The Gad well is really deep, and I recommend you guys check it out. In the same vein, a player who checked out a lot of Tony Williams and gave his Tom sweeps a muscular single stroke feel was Vinny. Oh, I forgot. Tom Sweep Lick 4. Vinny. Vinny's lick works really well on a five piece. It's also got some more advanced sticking. He starts with a six stroke roll here, just like Steve, but then changes to a right left, which leaves him in perfect position to sweep evenly down the toms. And I'm playing four notes on the floor tom, but if you have a five piece, it's two notes on each of the three toms. I'll ask Chris to notate it this way. In the free transcription you can download by clicking below the player. Let's look at a couple quick applications for this Vinny lick. In the first, I'll just play a driving slow rock beat, and on beat four of the second bar, I'll reprise that Vinny three tom sweep. Vinny himself has done stuff like this in live versions of songs like Mercury Fallen. For our second application, since we're trying to get into a little more advanced vocabulary, I want to try something that my brother from another mother, Craig Reynolds, might play with straight from the path. Or possibly Matt Cameron. Here I'm using the sweep and making kind of a hardcore groove out of it. And Craig, come on the podcast. It'll be great. Are we ready to get into this lick I've been messing around with? Before we do that, a quick reminder. You know it, but it bears repeating. You can get a free transcription of all this stuff by clicking the link below the player. Now, onto this Nate lick and how I improved it. It started as kind of an out of time thing. So that's why it has this weird shape. The trouble is, when you play it over sextuplets, it's uneven. You hit the high tom on the second sextuplet of the second beat. So it can kind of throw you off. It's not bad if you catch it, and it can give things a floaty, Garska kind of feel. But I kept getting lost with it. And then even when I did figure out a version I could orient over sextuplets, I wanted a version that was a little more downbeat oriented. Hence, the crossover. By simply playing the right on the high tom, crossing over, you can play two clean sets of sextuplets, then end on the downbeat. I'll play that slowly. Here's another variation, where instead of playing the high tom on beat two, you play a closed hat with a kick drum. And I'll play that slowly as well. I feel like this is a great tool to have in the toolkit if I'm playing a filler solo in sex tuplets and things go into Garska territory. Anyway, what do you guys think? Leave a comment below. 
And also leave a comment letting me know if you'd like to see more of this type of lesson. Anyway, you know the rest. It's been real. Always enjoy these. See you again real soon in another lesson of the week.